vielleicht haben wir gar Maybe we'll be lucky and our bottoms won't get wet. But there are muddy feet in any case. That's how it is when you're walking across the seabed. Knut Knudsen does it for fun off of Germany's North Sea coast. He is probably the only mudflat mailman in the world. Hello. He delivers to exactly one family. Knut's like a family member in principle for all of us. Regular water level reports are critical. Last tide low water 431, today at 308 a.m. Low water was three quarters over, in the night. Now we've got 575. That's still a whole lot. Yes, there's got to be about five meters. Then you can make it through the narrow channel, when it's not too stormy and the waves are a bit higher. But I'm optimistic now. 69-year-old Knud Knudsen is in his post office in his home on the island of Pellworm. The mail doesn't move when low tide isn't low enough. Knudsen can't deliver then. The tide sets his hours. As long as it looks like this outside, there won't be any mail. Six hours later, the mudflats, also known as Watt in German, are mostly out of the water. The seabed is passable, and the mudflat mailman begins his rounds. His load is heavy, and he's been officially commissioned by Germany's postal service, Deutsche Post. I always pack it in plastic, in case it rains. The backpacks aren't totally waterproof. I take what I can take. Sometimes I strap it on, if it's a little bit bulkier. Yes, and a refrigerator. He has to bring them on a ship. The weather app helps him decide what to wear. Today, maybe we'll get lucky without getting wet. From the sky? Yes, from the sky. Whenever possible, Knut Knudsen goes topless. That's his style. Well, I'll take a jacket now, but normally when the weather is good, I just go like this. Seven kilometers away from home is the agreed meeting place on the embankment. Knud regularly takes vacationers along his route. People with local knowledge rarely come. The guests scan the horizon. They ask themselves, where are we going? Now, off to the tiny island of Zuderog. We make a curve like this. We don't walk straight towards the island, we make a big loop. It's about six and a half kilometers long. Then we stay for an hour and go back the same way. And we'd like to cover these six and a half kilometers in an hour and a half. Maybe we'll get lucky and won't end up with wet bottoms. You usually only sink ankle deep. Knud likes walking in the Watt alone. Let's put it this way, he doesn't ask people to join him. Would you all like to go? If not, or if one of you turns around, that's okay, I get it. I'll tell them we're coming. Then a surprising order is sent from the embankment to the mudflats. Who'd like coffee? Hi Holger, it's Knud. On Germany's northern coast, people speak the country's only regional language called Plattdeutsch. The group booked a hike across the mudflats, and now they're walking into the North Sea. Your first impression? Beautiful. Cold. Cold. So here it's a bit deeper. As he said, the low water isn't really that low. We're still wading through quite a bit of water, but it's doable. 
and we still have a way to go. So let's take a closer look at the route. The island of Pelvorm is located off the German coast in the mudflats. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, a tourist magnet, and home to Knud Knudsen. There's no question the island is flat. Cows stand in the meadows, and the lighthouse is important for shipping. Idyllic houses are located in hamlets with curious names. There's lots of wind, and even more sheep. By the way, there are more sheep than people. Plus, there's a 13th century church with a broken steeple, and a historic organ from the 18th century. Starting from Pelvorm, the route goes to the tiny islet of Zudorog. Delivering the mail on foot is partly tradition, but it's also more practical. How would a boat be able to get here? For the group, land is finally within sight, but they're also thinking about getting their wet feet on solid ground. Knud Knudsen passes the time with his guests by reminiscing about Pelvorm in days past. I was born here. There was still a midwife back then. I grew up here too. I went to the mainland for a few years, but I always landed here again. Pelvorm used to be much more beautiful. And the people, the ones who come now, they've changed. Back then, the guests who came would get a ball, go down to the beach, and would be satisfied with what was there. And today, everyone has to be entertained. Well, I guess it's just what happens with time. There is no marked path, nothing but grey silt for miles. But Knud Knudsen knows every inch of this route. Do you want to put them back on? If not, you can leave them here. We're coming back this way. The group comes to a stop. We're approaching one of the highlights of our walk in the mudflats. We're going to make a turn here. Off of Zuderog. There's a light-coloured mix of sand and shells. Then we go left around the islet for a while. Ten thousand plant and animal species live in the mudflats, many of them in the seabed. Knud is fascinated by the strictly protected flora and fauna of the Vat. When his predecessor suddenly became ill and the job of mudflat mailman opened up, he didn't hesitate to take the job almost 25 years ago. There aren't any cars here. There's no traffic noise. You can really hear the birds here, up close, when they're singing. What makes this miracle possible? That Knud Knudsen and his guests can stroll on the seabed. There are tides all over the world, but it's rare for a seabed to be as exposed as it is here. The Baltic Sea is almost completely closed off, and water can barely flow. In the North Sea, it's the opposite. It opens up north, and lots of water flows with the tide. Knudsen is crossing the last meters and arriving at the islet. There's no big fanfare, just a terse northern German welcome. Hello. No. Yo. Moin. The guests are exhausted, but glad to be there. Super. It was a really good hike. A once-in-a-lifetime experience, crossing the mudflats to get to an island. Yes, it was a little strenuous, but otherwise very nice. Have you been to the Wat before? Yes, regularly. We go up to the North Sea every year regardless. The farmhouse is the only building on the island. We've brought a bit of sun with us. Hello. <laughs> that feels really good. Knut brings the mail into the house himself, then stops to rest for a bit. During that time, the guests get a short presentation about life on the islet. 
Here on the land that's 60 hectares, and 40 hectares are pasture land with Coburg fox sheep on it. We have several herds that graze all of this. Besides the sheep, four people live on Zuderog, a mother, father, and two children. And three times a week, Knud is part of the family too, something like a part-time granddad. It's time to report on lost teeth and swimming exams. In principle, Knud is like a family member for all of us. And it's completely clear when there's something happening, when the children have birthdays, Knud is there too. And for Christmas or other holidays. Well, I don't have any children, so as far as that goes, yeah. Of course, that's absolutely clear. There's no difference whether we're related or not. <laughs> if it was just business only, no, this wouldn't work. I would just be coming here and putting the post in the mailbox. It's better like this. Knud already fell in love with Zuderog decades ago. As a young man, he was here working to build coastal conservation works. All summer I worked during the week. I just have a connection with this islet. Now it's time to go back. A brisk southwest wind has kicked up and the clouds are thickening. And they have the march back across the mudflats ahead of them. Then it happens. They end up getting wet bottoms and rained on as well. How many kilometers have you done? Halfway around the globe. Certainly 25,000. And how many more will there be? It depends how long I stay fit. I want to do it for 10 more years. Now I'm 70. I hope to do it as long as I can.